Our next story illustrates how tragedies have a way of bringing communities closer together. In 1917, 62 men were lost in a Webster County coal mine explosion. 100 years later, their story is being rediscovered and retold for a new generation. We might call it the Bluegrass, Blues, and Barbecue region, but if you take its nine counties and add a couple more, a geologist would call it the Western Kentucky coal field. Believe it or not, this area was considered the largest producer of coal in the world from the 1960s into the 1980s. And if you doubt coal's impact on the community here in Webster County, all you have to do is drive through the town of Providence to see it on full display. While the mural and the Steve Shill sculpture illustrate coal's significance to this community, the county is now coming together to tell the story of the number seven mine in clay. What happened here 100 years ago? And why is it significant today? In April of 1917, World War I uh, had started. Most of these men, probably most young Webster County men, had been uh, had signed up from the, for the draft in June of 1917. A lot of the local men had gone to work in other mines. The strike was in progress. Uh, World War I's going on. A lot of men come up from the south to work in the local mines, and. Uh, on August the 4th, uh, that was one of the most historic days probably that, uh, that Webster County has ever known. Much of what we know of what happened in Clay at the number seven coal mine comes from the report filed with the MSHA. While witnesses would describe it as a beautiful summer morning, there was tension in the air. A strike had been declared. Shots had been fired into the mining encampment and a machine gun and searchlight had been mounted at the entrance to the mine. On this Saturday morning, 153 men entered the mine. Many of the men were born and raised in the area, but the mine was not at full strength. The company hired a large number of African-American men from farther south who had no previous mining experience. For many of them, August the 3rd was their first day in the coal mines. August 4th would mark their last. While accidents were more commonplace in the early 1900s, this inexperience on the part of the miners would have fatal consequences. A canvas curtain was left out of place at the end of the day on August the 3rd, depriving the coal face of ventilation. Gas filled up along the face, and when the miner's helper approached with his open flame lamp, it ignited. 153 men went into the mine that day, 62 men would lose their lives as a result of the explosion. August the 4th, 1917, would mark the deadliest mine disaster in Kentucky history. There were young men, there were older men. I think the youngest was 15, the oldest was in his 40s. We had three sets of brothers, uh, number one being the Brown brothers. There were three brothers, but we had two other sets of brothers, and then a father and son also that were killed. My father used to take care of the cemetery that's just down the road from here that's still maintained really well. And as a boy, I'd walk around over there and you look at the monuments and stuff, and I had seen the monument of a Mr. James Myers, and it said that he had died in the number seven mine explosion in 1927, which is 10 years after this one. Well, as I didn't know anything about it at the time as a kid, but as the local more news has come out about it since the awareness that's taken place here, I found out that that gentleman actually survived this 1917 explosion, and he stayed at that mine, and then 10 years later, he was killed in another explosion at that same mine. Of the 62 men killed in the explosion, 51 of them were African American. Many of these men had come into town just a couple of days before, and nearly 30 of them could not be identified. The West Kentucky Coal Company buried these men on company property in unmarked graves. And over time, the woods reclaimed the land on which they were buried. It's very sad because I feel that probably a lot of those folks' family, a lot of those people's family, um, probably never knew what happened to them. Um, they got on a train headed for Kentucky, a chance to make a living, never, were never heard from again. The site where the miners are buried is just a, a field covered with leaves and trees and 
he would never know that uh, you were standing in a, in a cemetery. One of the people that I met when I was a young, uh, younger person here was Miss Jessie Dalton that actually lived up here on this hill at the time of the explosion occurred with her family. And uh, she would used to tell us boys stories about the history of this area and everything and the things that had happened. And that was where I'd actually, first time I ever heard of this mine explosion was from Miss Jessie Dalton. And she had told us kids that uh, her and her family had actually stood in the yard of their house and watched as the wagons had brought the bodies up and come out into here. There was a better access road at that time, I'm assuming by the way she talked, because there's already a pre-existing cemetery here that's been abandoned for years. But those miners were brought out here and, and she actually stood there and witnessed that and then told us about it as, as children, you know. I just hate to see these guys make the ultimate sacrifice and not be remembered for it. You know? With the 100th anniversary of the explosion at the number seven mine came a renewed interest in its history. The county judge executive is leading the effort to document and preserve the unmarked grave. And the community has come together to make sure that this story is not forgotten. This tragedy is a small part of Cole's history and Cole's impact on communities like Clay and counties like Webster. For a hundred years and more, Cole has represented past, present, and future to families across the region. Well, the coal mine has been uh, such a huge history and a benefit to Webster County, you know, just almost from the very beginning. And that I've heard the older folks talk about that was here a long time before me, that there was times in Webster County when there was probably a hundred or more coal mines operating. My great-grandfather was a coal miner. My grandfather was a coal miner. My dad was a coal miner. I have uncles, cousins, nephews. Um, my son worked uh, while he was in college. He interned at the coal mine. So coal has just been a major part of, you know, not only my family, but so many families around us. It has been probably not a family that's been in Webster County, uh, you know, in the last uh, many decades that in some size, shape, form, or fashion has not been benefited by the presence of the coal mines in our area.